Big news today guys, your weapons should be working properly with this new update that just went live for Halo Infinite, so I want to cover all the details. We did cover this previously, but we actually got we'll get the chance to see what's actually going to be in this update. So let's take a quick look and see what's going on. So the first thing they mentioned is about the various skill jumps going on with the game. If you guys remember with the update with Season 2, a lot of the really cool hidden skill jumps were removed, uh, especially Aquarius though, it's getting a bit significant change. We're going to check out that a little bit later in this video, but the jumps on Bazaar, Live Fire and Street, so if you guys are familiar with those jumps, they're now back in the game, which is great. Saying also semi-automatic weapons like the Battle Rifle should no longer jam or fail to fire after continuous firing. Now I've certainly had this issue a lot more actually with the Heat Wave than the Battle Rifle, but it's kind of been known as like the weapon jamming update because everyone who plays this game uses a Battle Rifle and when your Battle Rifle doesn't shoot, well that's kind of a significant issue with the game. So that's a big change and hopefully that's actually truly fixed. All they did was just kind of revert that issue with the, where they added in the dead zone trigger issue because they tried to patch out the exploit when it comes to doing like a double shot in the game. Of course, not very many people are pulling that move off, but it's something that they wanted to fix up, but they just kind of reverted it back down to the previous version, and they're still working on that double shot issue, but it's not really significant enough, at least in my opinion. Uh, they also say that wasps on high power will now spawn two minutes after being destroyed, kind of back to the regular cadence right there. The overshield will now be available at the start of Bazaar, rather than right now, before before this patch update, with the season two update, it was starting at 30 seconds into the match, much like we have on the map Live Fire. Uh, zones like Total Control, Land Grab, and King of the Hill should no longer have a state which they can't be captured. I've seen this issue a couple times. I haven't come across it personally. I'm glad to see that got fixed up right there. Fire team members in big team battle matches will have the selected fire team marker color. So to kind of help know who you're on your team or exactly and who's in your squad. Uh, Scorpion tanks and rates will be dropped off by Pelicans more frequently in BTB matches. So you actually get the chance to play around with some vehicles in BTB. Crazy, right? <laughs> they also changed some join in progress rules, so then you're mo less likely to join a match that's about to be completed. Also, the Rock Shasa armor core will no longer appear incorrectly in customization menus uh, when you're switching up your body types. Great to see that too. Uh, also, the tank gun is returning into the campaign. So glad to see that bug was uh, put back into the game. So that's gonna be really fun to see. And also they changed up some of the uh, core issues when it comes to equipment in the game for campaigns. So like that's fixed up a lot of things. One thing I'm really happy about, speed lines. You can now actually have them disabled. They actually, when you disable it in the video files, it will actually will be disabled. So really happy about that. Uh, there's also some issues that they've had with the uh, Xbox and X store and also Xbox app version of the game. I basically just kind of say just to kind of go and make sure you update your game properly. And that's all the updates right there when it comes to this update when it comes to season two. And some other patch update information guys, we have some changes that came in yesterday on the 24th when it came to the Fracture event where Quick Play and Bot Bootcamp Attrition on Bizarre have been removed from both playlists. Attrition on Catalyst has been added to Quick Play. We also had Rumble Pit big changes happen with Rocket Oddball has been removed, which I don't know, I actually kind of like the mode. It was kind of ridiculous, but still kind of fun. Uh, Free for All Slayer will appear less often in Rumble Pit as well. So it's, it's gonna be turning more into like a casual, social kind of fun playlist rather than just like a straight up free for all playlist, which I'm all for that. I mean, if you're gonna put free for all in the game, make it ranked, make it something sweaty that people can actually try for. And also we have ranked arena where King of the Hill on Catalyst will now appear more often. Thank God, because Really playing this new content within season two is kind of tough to come across just because, um, you know, it's only one extra map for Arena and one extra map for BTB. So I haven't really had a whole lot of chance to play on these new maps and play some of the new content. So glad to see that, especially in Ranked Arena, we get to play that a little bit more. Now in some sad Halo news, it looks like the head of design at 343, Jerry Hook, has left 343 today, saying today marks my last day at 343 Industries. Microsoft and Halo. This journey has been filled with creating new world platforms and products from Xbox, Xbox Live to Halo. Now this one kind of hit me out of left field and so I'm like, I wasn't really expecting Jerry Hook to be leaving 343 at any time soon. But it looks like, uh, you know, another game dev lead at the company has left 343 again, which is, I don't know, it just seems a little concerning. It just seems a little concerning seeing all this. Like oftentimes, uh, we, have, we have been seeing a lot of these game devs that have left 343 since the launch of Halo Infinite, generally have been going on to 
new kinds of projects they're working on. We saw a multiplayer lead, uh, lead without working on part of Respawn, trying to work on new Star Wars games. Uh, we saw Quinn Del Hoyo, the lead of Sandbox, now leave to make his own company with Dr. Disrespect for Midnight Society. And now we see Jerry Hook leaving here on top of that, and various other members of 343 since the launch of Halo have left. Now, it's very standard for people who after a game is launched to leave to a new project, so that's very typical. Uh, but it just seems like it's happened a little often when it comes to Halo Infinite, so it's a little concerning. Uh, but it said, like, the only person I've seen that's left 343 that didn't really have, like, a fallback job or a new position that they went for was Chris Lee. But then once Chris Lee left, we got Joseph Staten in. So, I mean, it's kind of like, uh, take the information what you will. Uh, but it just seems like, yeah, another lead position at 343 is now empty and now looking for a new position. So, hey, anyone watching this video want to be head of design? Hit up with 343. They might have something for you there. If you guys don't know the head of design, he was a head of the live team service kind of stuff. So, like, all the micro transactions, the stores, the events, and kind of looks like all the live service-y kind of things that come with this new Halo game. And there have certainly been backlash on Halo with the launch of Halo Infinite when it comes to the store and the events, stuff like that. I will say that 343 has been very on top of changing the events, changing up the microtransactions, changing up the store, and a lot of other kind of live service-y things. They've been relatively quick to change this up, but it's been great to see that. It's sad to see Jerry Hook go, but hopefully he finds some greener pastures somewhere else. In some other gaming news, you might have heard a little bit of a thing called Modern Warfare 2, being released this year and they had a art reveal is what they called it for this event but they didn't just reveal some art we got the release date we also have a announcement date for june 8th guys it's gonna be coming around here it was revealed within this trailer we also had a reveal of task force 141 the main characters of the game which uh, to me actually I think solidifies one of the major leaks that were going around about the campaign and what kind of gameplay and also kind of experience what to expect with this campaign which i'm super excited about this game uh, the last few cons been kind of iffy about uh but this one i'm very interested in the reveal date right here is actually mentioned in the trailer j822 that would be june 8th 2022 we'll actually have a gameplay reveal of modern warfare or at least a trailer of some sorts uh, most likely this would be something related to campaign as we never really get multiplayer first we definitely get campaign which kind of helps set the tone and mood for what to expect from modern warfare 2 and we've been hearing really great things about this but it's one of the interesting leaks about Modern Warfare 2 is that it's supposed to be involving like some drug cartels and I think the reveal of one of the new characters within the new task force shows just that. In a recent blog posted up here on Call of Duty's website we also one get to see Ghost involved with this which is cool one of the cooler characters within Modern Warfare 2 and again we get the J October 28th 2022 release date which is crazy to you get the release date before you even get the chance to see what the game is all about so bringing the hype i guess right there and we got captain price and also other cast of characters but this one's kind of interesting to me is a new member is alejandro vargas who is a mexican special forces member part of this team now the rumors and leaks have been going around about this game but the campaign will be about drug cartels and obviously drug cartels are much more like in like South America. We have rumors are that it's gonna be in Colombia, but bringing in like someone from Mexican special forces, maybe might have some info, I don't know. I mean, I think drug cartels are also kind of reach up to Mexico as well. So, I mean, this could confirm that leaked information as well, which would do, definitely be a really cool type of story to dig into. There was also an update to Call of Duty Vanguard, which actually provided some information on what's gonna be happening with Modern Warfare 2 editions, where they have the standard edition, cross-gen bundle, as well as a vault edition. So this does confirm that Modern Warfare 2 will be on last gen consoles, which sounds kind of like, man, really? They're still putting out games on that platform, but it's still kind of difficult to find a console for the current gen because of the chip shortage that's going around in the world right now. So it's really great to see that they're still, you know, they probably saw some form of a profit margin to make sure that they can develop for the previous gen. Now, some of the vault edition information seems a bit sus, but I mean, it's within the game code, at least, where it says with the battle pass, you get to have 50 tier skips, which is basically skipping half the battle pass to get the content out there. A red team 141 operator pack with ghost, so prize Farah operators. The Farah might be coming back with Modern Warfare 2, which would be great to see. Uh, we also have different uh, visual effects, uh, 10 hours of double XP and weapon XP, a ghost legacy pack, 12 operator skins and stuff like that. So there's a lot of extra little goodies here on top of that. Um, we've also heard the rumor of whenever we do get to the alpha which most likely will happen at the end of 
August, according to the different leaks and also typical timeframes we see for Call of Duty, uh, that it will be a PlayStation exclusive at first and then be available for other platforms. I'm sure many of you are thinking it's just another Call of Duty, guys. Who cares? Well, this one actually seems to be an actual significant jump forward like the last Modern Warfare was. Uh, Modern Warzone, who is a very significant leaker and information news guy on Twitter when it comes to anything Call of Duty related, re very reliable source, honestly, it says, I know people love to meme and call myself and Charlie Intel uh, paid shills, but just telling you guys the truth, Modern Warfare 2 does indeed represent the future of Call of Duty. It's a whole new era. You'll see yourself in soon enough, which if you guys don't know, this Call of Duty right here is going to be the next Call of Duty for the next two years. They're not, there's not going to be a Call of Duty following up this Call of Duty. This is going to be at least two years game cycle for this game. So this is going to be like a fresh restart for the Call of Duty franchise uh, with the rumored Warzone 2. It's supposed to be kind of a fresh restart as well. We'll see how that turns out. But yeah, a lot of juicy news going on with Modern Warfare 2, guys. If you guys want to keep up to date with that game as well as Halo and other games related, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel or miss any content from me recently. Check out this playlist right here. I got linked to all my gaming news and informational videos right there. Thanks so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.